Hi again. Hey. You? you done on the phone? I am done. Oh. Oh, because I'm I always usually call you and you're like really tired, so calling a little bit earlier. You it's called good. at the right time, but I'm gonna go to the office so that I can not disturb Tom listening to oh. the news. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, do you want me to call you back? Do, do you want to turn it down, or do you want me to go up? Hey, no, no, it's uh, Jerd. So he's he's going to turn down the radio and listen to us. Ah, uh, so he's he's learning too. Yeah. So what's new? Uh, what's new with me? Um, hmm. Uh, me, I just been reading things on, on learning a little insights about masonry. Learn insights with the words daily. Things with the words, languaging. Um, uh, the esoteric things. Uh, like I, I see little insights. I watched the Harry Potter movie, all the Harry Potter movies, and um. You know they they put stuff in that movie, but it wasn't like other movies I watched. I guess because it was really popular, a lot. it was pop really pop. Blah. <laughs> but <laughs> it was made really popular, and um, it's it, I you know the movies I noticed. Uh, you did mention that that like some movies that are not like a told every day like the critics are told it's bad. Usually have something, you know, in them. Well, you know, it couldn't have been written by a woman. Yeah. yeah. And they always use uh, these, they always use these priests with uh, long beards and long hair. Yeah. They're the wise ones. And their names, I know, in like Lord of the Rings, uh, this movie, it's always Ganon, Dor, or Dor. They always have Dor in their name, and that's yeah. a link to Aaron's Rod, I guess, right? That's well, that's my name, Dumbledore. Dumbledore. <laughs> yeah, Dumbledore. You look like yeah, they, they do look like you, man. You look just like those guys. <laughs> Dumbledore is for the Tudor kings of England. Mm. Tudor kings. Oh. Uh. Always an exit. Front door and a back door. Hmm. That that have to do with time. Like, it has to do with escape. Because <laughs> yeah, that, that, that reminded me of like, that window of opportunity. That you say. Yeah. Oh. They have a double door uh, in uh, Greenland mm-hmm. where there's uh, an entry and an exit in two different time zones. Mm. The line goes right between the two. Yeah, I'm... Um... Dana showed me some things that you uh, were telling him about, like with the um, the how they convey messages through geography and like clouds, the weather channel. Yeah. <laughs> wow! Like, how clouds did you? Clouds are are very important in <laughs> communication mm-hmm. because they're the most appropriate vehicle for putting in sfumato. Sfumato. Word that means uh, imagery that doesn't belong are, are hidden within other images, and the clouds are the most appropriate because you can make them whatever shape you want, and they usually uh, show faces of cats or lions or uh, elephants and a lot of people. If you look at them closely, mm-hmm. you can recognize some of the faces. I've been there once. <laughs> really? Yeah. What do you think that they're trying to say? Well, it's it's impossible to know for certain mm-hmm. until a cla- cataclysmic event occurs, and then you can look at it in hindsight. But in foresight... Um, this year seems to have been a whole year of diversion. So, 
They're putting in all kinds of things, but doing nothing about it. Mm. So mm. it's it's to make people cry wolf or um, be discredited for saying something's going to happen when it's not, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm. But Canada, um, Environment Canada, is is the most important place for for that kind of stuff. EC basically means here yeah. phonetically. Mm-hmm. Environment Canada, EC. Yeah, I thought that was with the word that one thing in the code you know, is in PT. That yeah. means little. Yeah, PT. Yeah. Uh, or you can say the Med- Medici, E C again, but with an I, yeah. Medici. Medi, E C. What was the importance of that family? Because they, they were involved. I know, like. Well, they're they're the media. They're the yeah. headquarters of the international conglomerate media. Because I, I remember, I think Machiavelli worked for that family. Yeah. So. Uh, so they they were the financiers, and and uh, Lorenzo uh, was uh, one of the most important ones. And so when you see uh, uh, Renz, like they have on on the net, there's Renz a website, mm-hmm. or the Saint Lawrence mm-hmm. uh, River and Gulf, uh, that basically links them directly. To, to that uh, group. In England, you have the Spencers, and the Spence. That gives you that Ents, again, as in Lorenzo. Hmm. So these families, like Merovingians, they're all, would you consider them like a priest type of thing? Or? They're all linked to... Uh, Laboratory manufactured people. Yeah. Got to remember that when you make somebody in a in a laboratory, mm-hmm. uh, that genetic makeup is passed down for four generations. So mm-hmm. they control basically a hundred years around the one that was manufactured. It's always, um, you know, the the cops and the professionals, whether they be doctors, lawyers, or athletes, or what have you, they're always linked to those families. Policemen are are important. Yeah, I've noticed too. Like they make a fact, like like kings and queens, and yeah. they always make a. Uh, it's like a almost like a social thing. They make like they have to be pure blood. Yeah. With the whole. Well, they, blood um, is just a a code word for DNA. Yeah. Because there's no such thing as a bloodline. It's only a DNA line. You don't pass on blood. You pass on DNA. Right. Yeah. So what they did in the past, these people who managed like help manage in the system they would breed these people but they yeah. started recently like in I guess Japan is when they started doing it on a mass scale yeah. they breed them for the military they breed them for the police huh. they breed them as athletes Yeah. oh yeah definitely doctors and lawyers Really? Do you think doctors and lawyers are bred? Really? Yeah, media. Medicine. Medi is media. Cine Mm. is movies. Mm. Huh. I'm trying to find out what... Doctors always have sons who want to be doctors. Around here, you'll see a lot of Indians and Asians who be in the medical... Yeah, but I don't know if that's maybe related to breeding, like 
Yeah, it takes a special kind of Mind. brain, uh, usually one that is ROM in, in approach, read-only memory. Mm-hmm. So everything they get, they get from a book. They're not basically having to figure out things. They just follow the book. Oh, that that's interesting that you say that because I don't think of it like some people that I know, like they have to kind of read things in a book. Yeah, same understand. thing with religious people, Bibles and oh. Quran and hmm. any of the religious books follow on the lead of Confucius. They just confuse us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on the phone. Okay. Uh. Is that your uh, That's my, neighbor or your That's my mother. Your mother. She had to tell me something. Yeah. She's um uh me like the whole story, me and my family, Glenn. Is <laughs> <laughs> uh like I'm I'm sorta of like uh, I guess like an outsider in a sense. A what? I'm like an outsider, but... Uh, like, black sheep. Yeah. You know, yeah. That for a black man. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to be a white sheep <laughs> family. Yeah. And, um, I don't know. I'm still trying to find out, um, because you find out, I don't know how hard it was for you to find out, like, how you came to be, you know, because you said... Well, it's always understanding the premise Mm -hmm. that genetic engineering is possible. And and when nothing else answers the questions in your own life, Mm -hmm. then you start looking at, is it possible that I was? In my case, everything fits. I am reliving the story of Akhenaten. Everybody in my world uh, are linked to that story. That goes back to uh, about 1500 B.C. He was married to Nefertiti. Titi, huh. although they spell it uh, T-E-T-E. Tite in French means head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had six girls. Oh, that's the one the married, supposedly the the priest set him up. Yeah. They, they thought, uh, they, they made the people think that he married the sister or... Yeah, well, in in uh, Egyptian society, you you could not become a pharaoh because the lineage was always through the woman. Mm-hmm. But the woman could not become a pharaoh. It had to be the husband of the woman. Mm. So they all, before they could become pharaoh, had to marry somebody who was in line in the woman's lineage. So you ended up having grandfathers marrying their granddaughter in order to be pharaoh. And that wasn't looked at as, was it looked at? No, that that was considered quite normal. The only thing in the Egyptian society that wasn't considered normal was sex with your mother. The male having sex with the mother was only considered normal in Persia. Oh, really? Oh, man. Not not just normal. It was a way of life. A necessity to promotion. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and that's why Akhenaten. Uh, was said to have had a relationship with his mother because he was not raised in Egypt. Oh, the he was raised in um, in northern, what we would call Iran today, oh. near Lake Van, probably in a place called Hurry, 
in a country called Mitanni. Mit Annie. The hurry, I remember in a post you put something like that, like hurricane. Yeah. Did that link to that? Oh. Yeah. That's where the cane came from. He left the garden, went off to uh, be a builder of society. Yeah, I never mentioned how he uh, reduced, because supposedly it's him and his brother and his father. Abel. Yeah. And they don't mention, like, who they reproduce with. Yeah. So I'm thinking he had sex with his own mother or something. Huh? Probably. Huh. That's why you have the serpent that eats its own tail. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. But I think the serpent also represents, too, like, cunning. Wisdom. Yeah, wisdom. But when you look at the animal, some people, you could compare it, I guess, to cunning because how it, it strikes. I think it might be linked to that or something. Well, you have the boa that is a constrictor. You have the the other one that comes out of the basket and dances. Oh, the python. Right? I think, uh, a cobra. Cobra, cobra. yeah. yeah. The, the name for a female is Barbara. Barbara? Yeah. Bra, bra. <laughs> Cold bra. Mm. Two bra. Bra, bra. Bar, bra. <laughs> yeah, just over this past week, I've been listening to a lot of, uh, I think I told you this before, a lot of Manly P. Hall. Have you ever looked into this stuff? At what? Manly P. Hall. Uh, yeah, a long time ago. What did you think of him, his stuff? Well, it's he's the man of the Y because he's got L E and a Y name. P means he's a teacher, a transmitter of information. Mm -hmm. uh, Hall is is basically um, la feminine approach to doing things. Yeah, because so he he's a male female mm -hmm. who's transmitting information. Because he, you know, he'll he'll give you some good insights into certain things, but for a lot of stuff, so just everything is a psychological consciousness type of thing. With this mm -hmm. guy. And I just I'm just like, oh man, he just misleading everybody. <laughs> yeah, well, it has to confuse. Yeah, Confucius confuses. Yeah. But he did have some, like he was talking about one theory of the, when he goes through the creation of mythology and stuff, I thought it was interesting. He talks about how they call it the spore, spore theory, how a comet you know, came here and me, there was like started some type of reaction in life, like the stuff like that he talks about. I, I got insight from that. So. Well, that's how life is made and life is changed is by new chemistry arriving from the root cloud, which is called the Oort cloud. So we came from the Oort cloud then, right? Everything comes from the Oort cloud. That's the repository of the leftovers of uh, the Big Bang. Mm. Oh, because I think about that, like, how, like, life gets started anywhere. Like, what is it that you call a creation, but, like... Well, there's a... Creation is what sets science in motion. Mm -hmm. it, it has rules by which it operates. Mm -hmm. Those rules are based upon a scientific formula which all the scientists are looking for, the root of all of this is in a unified theory of the universe. And they can't get it because the whole thing with the uh, particle accelerator, you said they've never, with the whole quarks, they said they've never seen it actually? 
That's right. They haven't they haven't seen the action take but they, place. But they can explain it, though. Yeah. Uh, and, and their big problem is gravity. Gravity as we know it mm-hmm. began in the first half second of the Big Bang. Wow. And it was different before the Big Bang. That's why the unified theory of the universe doesn't work um, the way they explain it in in science because it fails to explain the Big Bang. So they have to do the particle accelerator stuff in like, order to find out what gravity did before it became gravity as we know it. Like, I think about, like, how... Because people say, like, there had to be, like, a cause or a first cause. Like, what, what do you think it was, like, a, 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 some type of comet in space or something that collided with something? Or Well, my, my um, uh, guess, because that's all you have, mm-hmm. educated guess, is that a big uh, bang expands until it begins to contract into a big crunch. It's a matter of going from a singularity and returning to a singularity Mm. where everything is all compacted together and at one point it then explodes and does it again. So Mm. this eternity that we're living in, Mm -hmm. this universe, as part of that eternity, is only one step in an ongoing process. Each each step is designed to teach lessons. Yeah. That's what my guess of, like, how life was... Because you said DNA is everywhere, so... DNA had some information in it to start with something yeah. in the beginning, I guess. And Well, it starts with the quirks and... Yeah. Uh, there was some type of information in this. Yeah. The hadron. So there had to be information in that for it to even know to do that, I guess, yeah. some instruction. So then, I guess, over time, you know, it gained more knowledge. Yeah. And it came tougher. It's interesting that they use the name Hadron, uh, same structure in the word NORAD, Hmm. the the gang of people who watch uh, the possibility of rockets coming over the northern hemisphere from, from Russia. You know what I feel like though, like when I feel like when they come out with these, like they say, "Oh, we found this new bone." Like that's them just like basically we're like dogs and just throwing up scraps and we just run that's into right. it. <laughs> we well. arrive at a point uh, in learning mm-hmm. where they need to move us forward, oh. so they give us the next step. Mm-hmm. And then we move there and start learning about that. And when we're done that, they give us another piece of information and we move there. But mm-hmm. they don't want to give it to their worst enemies. They give it to their best friends. And and that way they can control empires. Mm-hmm. And, and they can give and they can take. Yeah. Harm and assist. So, the Lord giveth and the Lord takes away. Yeah, and right now they're taking away from the U.S. Yeah. Everything, but they're giving it to the Asia, right? Yeah, so well, in, trans, in transition, they're giving it to Asia because that's where it came from. But in reality, mm-hmm. Asia is downloading it to the Southern Hemisphere. Brazil, because, South Africa. Mm, because that's... Turkey, that, I thought like like places like um, 
like I mean groups like the the Theosophical Society. I thought their job was basically like a merger of bringing it back to Asia, like part of now, what bring, we bringing it back to Asia means eventually ending up in India. Now, all you have to do is follow what India is doing because it's going to receive everything, and what they're doing is most important, and what they're doing is downloading to Brazil. Mm. Speak to anybody who lives in Rio, Mm -hmm. and they'll tell you, that uh, most of the activity in Brazil is the end product of Hindu involvement. And the big statue of Jesus is called the Redeemer. So he's cashing in, Mm -hmm. cashing in his chips. Yeah, it's interesting they put it in, in, in South America. Yeah, I seen something that you actually. Yeah, I seen something that you mentioned to uh, Dana with the black balls. I think yeah, black, that's um. You that's interesting how you find all these 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 communication uh, devices they use. I guess methods they use. Mhm. That's interesting. Like, um, I, I, have you been able to read like? Like architecture of um everything has symbolisms yeah in it. it's all community right it's, now mm-hmm. the symbolism that's important is colossus. colossus everybody wants to make things bigger right now in ottawa the this week they announced a project mm-hmm. to make a colossus out of the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. that is used in hockey as the top prize in hockey. So they're going to raise funds to put up the biggest version of a trophy in Ottawa. Of course, hockey, if you read the word, it's connected co key, the second key. Well, it has O and E in it. Well, the first key is held by the Pope, mm-hmm. and the second key is held by the nuns. So this region is basically the world of the uh, female that's really a male. Then you look at UBS, mm-hmm. Skull and Bones, Bass, UBS. They have three keys. So they're the third key. Third key. <laughs> they're the key to genetic engineering. Uh. Coprolite. Pops uh. and pros. How did you find out about the coprolite in the, through encyclopedia? Just one day going through it. Yeah, it was partly that and partly my upbringing that led me to believe that I was genetically engineered, and then tracing mm-hmm. the word regal. Go again. Gore, Al Gore which is just regal. Uh, Gore is a three-sided piece of cloth or land. Parachutes are made of gores. Mm -hmm. They're assembled triangles. And in the movies, uh, the big craze right now is gore. So I guess the message they're telling us is so regal. And I know it's that name. It's in uh when I was looking up the things on like the temples and stuff, they said um one name for a coffin is Soros. They call it Soros. And uh and then you there's a guy, one of the guys I work for, his name is George Soros. 
Yeah, well, the the guy that funded the campaign against the Bushes for the Democrats mm-hmm. was George Soros. Yeah, and his name George is Rigo, and Soros, I guess they're saying, is bringing him back from the dead. Yeah, Soros is basically ruse. Yeah, that too. So it's it's the ruse to bring things back. Mm. George, Rigo, bring it back, and. Zorro, Soros is, is basically your ruse. What's going on with um uh what you were saying before when I last talked to you, um about the the uh the uh what they were doing on the ground. Right now, uh, they have announced that in November. Mm-hmm. The uh, particle accelerator at CERN Mm -hmm. (coughs) will be restarted and will begin its experiment in identifying the proper hadron to uh, collide. Chicago at Fermi Mm -hmm. are, are working on the same project and they believe that they've now isolated the right hadron, and uh, they have a possibility of beating CERN to the punch, getting it done first. Either way, you're dealing with doing something underground that doesn't, belong underground, can't go there naturally. Yeah. And and the um, the dangers of it being done underground are completely under reported. Well <laughs> Glenn man. Like I don't know, like um, but with that, like the, the security, they didn't tell you, uh, you, 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 so you don't think that it's them digging on the ground, or it's just a possibility. What is um, happening underground has been triangulated. Mm-hmm. That's why I spent three nights in the mm-hmm. bush this week. Um, the cell has triangulated it mm-hmm. and for their purposes um, have identified what it is. Uh, they haven't told me oh, okay. what it is. They've just told me where it is. From From what I can figure out, it seems to be more a mechanical activity. Hmm. So it, if it's a mechanical, I can just like I'm digging it right underneath your nose type of thing. Yeah. It, it could be a conveyor type of system yeah. because the, the area of this rock underground is much larger than just our farm here. And what I've suspected is that this end of it is um, used for two things, uh, storage Mm -hmm. and aquaculture. So if they're bringing stuff in, it would need a conveyor type of equipment to bring it and, and put it on shelves someplace. That's why they have reinforced concrete patio blocks around here, Mm -hmm. even though there's no building that required reinforced concrete patio blocks. So that would have to be used underground. Cement plant is just up the road. They're no longer making anything there, just using it as a marketing place. But it has all the equipment. could be reopened tomorrow, make more reinforced concrete blocks. If it's a um, 
aquaculture, uh, growing vegetables or whatever mm-hmm. in, in water, it would require some kind of conveyor mechanism as well to move it further up the line to the place closer to the railway track or the river where people would be sent in and get out underground and then get on a train during the night. The yeah. trains, um, we were listening to the sound of of the whistles as they come through this area. I don't think I've ever heard of a place anywhere in Canada that has so many whistles from trains during the night. They're not just whistling. They're they're doing Morse code. Mm. So they're they're telling an audience at almost every half hour as another train goes by. Uh, a different story. So I imagine that um, different groups of people are told, well, you listen at 4.30, these other people listen at 5, the third group listens at 5.30, the next group listens at 6. So everybody has their own time slot, Mm -hmm. and if they read Morse code, they're being uh, given a message about what's being planned for that day or that week, that kind of stuff. When I look at all this stuff, I, I, as I see more and more, I, we, it's like we live in a phone. It's just one big communication device. Absolutely. <laughs> like, wow. Ah, Bell. She's the mother. <laughs> yeah. And I was just thinking about going to the museum. They call it the Museum of Modern Art. It's, the acronym is... Mama, yeah, a mama. So I know that's something, and I know I, I'll go look in all these. I, I was talking about going with with Dana, and I know there's all types of messages in the paintings. Yeah. And Guggenheim. Yeah, yeah another that's another one they they have with that stuff. So yeah, because I because I'm looking to the Basques. Is it? Uh, yeah. Uh. And and to the miners because the Guggenheim family was metallurgy mining. Mm. All of that stuff. That's where they made their money. So is that linked to Cain too? Because when you look at when they built the temple, Hiram was uh, cunning in brass and yeah. metallurgy. And they were building holy of holies that had holes in them. <laughs> <laughs> you could steal stuff. That's why he called it that. Well, they got the little jokes, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, got to give them credit for uh, at least making it fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was just looking at a picture of um, her name is Frida. Frida something. Frida. Um, what's the last name? Uh, huh? Fred. No, Fr- Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo. It was because I went on the the museum's website. Yeah. And I think um, she was like some type of queen or something. And I'm looking at a picture of her. You can you can look it up on the internet. It's, she has like one. She looks like a man on, and she probably was. You know, pop, well, yeah. if if you look at the original uh-huh. uh, version of. Uh, Females that were made for males, uh-huh. they're all male looking. Really? Yeah. And then Nefertiti was the first one who basically looked more like a female. What? So Hatchet, my whole. Hatchet's put there, the, the first female pharaoh of Egypt mm-hmm. lived about 100 years before Nefertiti. And we're, we've got the same thing here. If you look around and you say, okay, uh, Golda Meir mm-hmm. was the first one after World War II. Mm-hmm. She was about as butch-looking as you could get. Yeah. And then you have Margaret Thatcher. Then you have Hillary Clinton. So it's it's kind of moving in 
a direction of looking more and more female, uh, you end up with Carla Bruni. So hold, let me get this straight. Vehicle. Yeah, yeah. Let me get this straight. So my whole view is warped, probably. Um, original females looked more like men. You say? No, original females that were male inside looked more masculine and therefore were not the best prospect for use in the future. So they had to modify the DNA to bring it slowly towards looking more feminine. But that's a, a tough job when you're basically using a man's physique, six foot, six mm-hmm. foot one, uh, having to make it look feminine. So they, they've had a, a pretty tough job. But as you can tell by looking at Carla Bruni, mm-hmm. uh, pretty well succeeded. Mm. No, nobody can imagine a uh, topless, good-looking woman uh, as being the next Hitler. <laughs> Allen. Yeah. You know, it was easy to hate uh, Hitler or Stalin because they could be demonized. Yeah. That's almost impossible to do, as you saw in the last U.S. election. Well, I seen uh, Hillary did. She got a little demonized, like. Yeah, but look at the one from Alaska. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was another one. Yeah, she's. That's the next step. She's a call of Bruni Up type. From Hillary. Yeah. Man. Wow, man. <laughs> you know, when you talk to anybody about the governor of Alaska during the last election, mm-hmm. and. Uh, yeah, boy, would I like to be in the sack with her. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. You know, she's stupid. It <laughs> yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so do you think, like, um, these, um, a lot of them, uh, uh, are they, what are they, like, uh, hetero? Uh, 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 are they, um, are they, are they, they like other women or men or whatever? What? I, I would imagine that um, they like themselves more than anybody else. They will do whatever is required to win. Mm. So they they could hate somebody mm. and sleep with them if that's going to advance their cause. Damn, man, that's a cold as ice. <laughs> you can get 20 five-year-old girls mm-hmm. uh, sleeping with 75-year-old men yeah. if that advances their cause. That's, uh... Yeah. Well, the, what was the story that um that one lady who was murdered? She was married to a, a rich man. Yeah, the, the one in Florida. Or, I think, yeah, she was like a porn star or something like that? Or? Yeah. Um... Yeah, and she had a baby. And then her son was yeah. by him. Uh huh. And and it's more likely to have been uh, a clone of him. He didn't want to give up his fortune. She made a deal. Mm-hmm. She would carry him to term as a baby girl. Mm. But didn't they kill the the child too? No, they killed her real son. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. He was in his late teens or early twenties. I I don't understand. Like, what? How how does she? How can she? How does she benefit the system? Well, she produced a a baby, which was the most important thing. Well, even the babies. And and she was stupid, so they could play games around her and control her every move. Mm-hmm. And when the task was done, they had to get rid of her 
and transfer the baby to a guardian. And and they had this guy come out and declare that the DNA guaranteed that it had been this photographer from Hollywood mm-hmm. who had been the father of the child, when in fact it's, it's the old man mm. who is being replicated. Mm. There was no real father, just genetic engineering activity. Can't come out and say that. Yeah. yeah. Because that's that's illegal now, right? Yeah. And that's the whole allegory in the movie The Sixth Day. Yeah. How they clone people and that stuff and the minute you make one, you have a lineage of a hundred years. Mm-hmm. Four generations. Mm. Right. So uh, that's why I think I am sometimes. Like I'm, I might just be part of the. I generation. am. <laughs> I am. There's no doubt about it. But you seem to be more directly right in the lab somewhere, and they just put you somewhere. Yeah, but you too. Yeah. You, know, you come from Haiti. Yeah, but that's more like they did it, and uh, maybe I'm probably like generations down. Yeah. Well, Haiti is uh, uh, artificial insemination it. Yeah. It connected to artificial insemination. That's why they kept it poor. They didn't want outsiders to be going there and visiting. Mm. Uh, They needed to do a lot of stuff in secret. Mm. Yeah, and there's a lot of things you had to keep it poor. So what do you think was going on in Dominican Republic? What's their role? Same thing. That's the place where Christopher Columbus landed, and it marked the beginning of a new phoenix, 1492. Hmm. I know all these like Latin countries, they had these uh, orders, these priests, you know, basically uh, settling over there and religion make the people religious or whatever. Like all these like 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 uh, Colombia, they're all like Catholic missionaries. A lot of them yep. went to these countries. Yeah, well, that was their real role. Yeah. They pretend they're there to save. Yeah. The only people they want to save is themselves. Yeah. Improve their own conditions. At the VAT, I can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and these saints. V eight VAT V eight. And and and. And uh, it also has AI in it, too. No. And these I saints, can. what happened? I can. <laughs> that it can. I can. Cain. C-A-I-N. Yeah, I noticed these saints, too. They have, um, uh, from what I learned, like, they're all, like, when you really look into them, they're all, like, learned... This is what Manly P. Hall said. He said they're all learned in mysticism and esoteric doctrines, all of them, the saints, when you look at all of them. Well, the saint is Nazi. Yeah. Nazi so the... is, is ain't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, basically mirroring the tain is mm. the, the thing that makes a mirror possible, the sheet at the back of the mirror mm. causes the reflection. Yeah, when I get over there, um, you wouldn't mind if I just bring you some movies, because I wanted you like, to see some movies. Um, All depends on how much time I have. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to watch it with me. I mean, like, yeah. I'll leave it for you. Yeah. So. Old winter days. Uh, those are coming up. So. You have them on what? On disc or on disc? On tape. I have it on disc. a disc. Yeah. The yeah. new computer that was sent to me from California uh-huh. uh, doesn't work. Whoever played with it uh, mm-hmm. may 
may have done something to it or it may have been in it before I received it. I don't know. But in any event, I can't use it. I need somebody who understands modern computers to see if they can clean it out. You know what I could do for you? I can I'm thinking about uh I was thinking about this. Maybe I could like me and somebody else could pitch in. I could get you a new computer but I can't guarantee what's gonna happen to it after that because of who you are it, you know you'll just go out on and... they're constantly trying to limit my ability to gather information yeah and uh, I tried loading a disk in there and it tells me that the memory is full well it wasn't full when it arrived all of a sudden it's full now how do you get rid of it you know yeah well, I can get you some brand new up to date computer but um and get you all a uh, anti this virus whatever spyware but they're, they're the ones who bring you most of the viruses yeah <laughs> yeah they do like i me i'm constantly uh you know, i i i run it and i'll get like spyware but like sometimes what, i think what i need is a guy like you who can sit in front and i say okay Get me this. <laughs> yeah. And you do it. Yeah. You know? And you keep it running because I I don't have the time necessary to learn all of that stuff over again. I've got too much to learn directly associated to what I'm doing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I, I want to ask you, um, when you started overstanding, when you actually started, was it, it was age that brought the overstanding as getting older? No. It was time. Mm. You you could learn it when you're young mm-hmm. if you have the basic information that I am providing to people mm-hmm. now. Yeah. But in my in my days nobody had it. Nobody knew. They all had a gut feeling. Mm-hmm that there was something there, but they didn't have any words for it. Yeah. And it was just my persistence. And a city. A city. Yeah, me, when I'm, I, I, I see the, over, like when I look at something or look at it and I, I start overstanding, it's like really astounding, but, hello? Yeah. I, I wonder how, how can I explain it to other like the only people I can really t- explain things to are people who are on the same trail, yeah. or f- and it's people, other people who they know about the stuff, but they haven't. I guess we, I don't know, say advanced in it's that a type. journey that requires time. Yeah, and if you're on the learning process, then mm-hmm. eventually you get it. Yeah, but not too many people want to participate. They would rather wait for the kick in the ass. Yeah. Well, when I get, when I get up there, I want to learn everything. <laughs> yeah. I, I I don't want to just learn this part. I'm trying to learn everything. <laughs> or or it can't it can't happen overnight. That's why osmosis. Yeah. yeah. Scotty I, said, you know, when when he came here, mm-hmm. um, he knew. Um, before he came, that what there was to learn couldn't be learned in a seminar or, yeah. or a week. He had to live it. Yeah. And he spent 50 days, and he wants to come back first thing in the spring. You know. yeah. so, I might just spend the summer. the most interesting time in his life. Yeah. I might just spend the summer there. Think about it. I, I could probably spend the summer there. and just. That's, that's okay. Oh man, that's gonna be an experience, though, man. Because um... <laughs> things are happening all the time. <laughs> yeah, I just don't wanna. Like, say I just leave. I'm like, all right, Glenn, go to my grandmother or something, and then something happens. Uh, <laughs> some type of people. I mean, I know I'm gonna probably meet some. Actually, I got an email from this kid. Um. He's actually from Canada too. Uh his name is Graham Kilshaw. Right. And uh 
you know, he he said some things to me. He's like, he said, um, oh yeah, I I was thinking about being uh, joining the fraternity and all this stuff. Cause he said he seen my blog and he noticed your stuff. He found it interesting. And I was telling him I haven't spoke to him in a while. And then all of a sudden he says. He goes, he goes, I agree with order, I disagree with chaos, I agree with extropy, and disagree with entropy. I want unity with the supreme, I am high society, I have sided with the intelligent, I dislike conspiracy theorists, and am proud that our society protects us from the mentally deranged and unfit. Now, in there, he was just telling me, I, I don't... I want to be a slave. You yeah. <laughs> I love being a slave. Yeah, I could have... I guess I don't know, man. I, he just wants to. I guess the easy way it seems like the easy way at the moment. Short term, instant gratification. Yeah, that's what he's after. Yeah, and and you can't reason with a person like that. Oh yeah, I don't even bother. It's... I got a call today from somebody you know. Yeah, and he also wants to come. He's from Connecticut. Oh. I said, "What's your name?" He said, "Toilet." I said, oh, huh, Elliot, eh? Toilet, oh, I think he, ch- was he telling you Tyler, or does he? Or... Toilet, he said. Toilet. <laughs> <laughs> That's Elliot. Elliot. Oh, well, this guy, I, I just started, like, talking to him. I don't know him uh, too well, but I spoke to him maybe twice mm-hmm. over the phone. And he, I remember him telling me his name was uh, Toilet, he, his name was Tyler. People call him Tyler. I guess, I don't know. I don't know. Why would he tell you that? I asked him, I said, what's your first name? He said, Toilet. Because I've already uh, printed on the site uh, that our former prime minister was Pierre Elliott Trudeau. So Pierre is a rock. Mm-hmm. Elliot is a toilet. And Trudeau means a water hole. Mm-hmm. So... Toilet is a water hole. So he's like, toilet, toilet. Wow. Oh. And and Trudeau, mm. uh, if you just use the letters, your tru is, is turd. T-R-U-D. T-U-R-D. Turd in water is what you get in a toilet. So that's why his second name is Elliot. Oh. Oh. But he's dead now. His uh, his son Justin mm-hmm. is just in time. <laughs> Anyways, Jared, I gotta go do some work to prepare for tomorrow's post. Mm. I like the post the but that that post on the ant the antichrist. You said antichrist to be antichrist you have to be anti human. Yeah. Yeah. Because Christ is human. Christ is humanity. It wasn't some guy that lived two thousand years ago. Yeah. It's us today. Yeah. We are all Christ. I thought America, especially Western. Yeah. All linked to the IRS, which is linked to the French version of Revenu. Yeah. Come back. Yeah. yeah. Rego. <laughs> yeah. All comes down to the same thing. And Venu comes from Venus, the Eastern Star. Oh, so that's what Venus is. Um, so I seen another post you put on um I guess this is in response to that police officer who yeah. charged me. Oh. Oh. Whatever happened to that other with that other guy it was like a Mason one of the Masons who emailed you to tell you that you were right. He never answered um uh, when I I answered him back and said if you are who you say you are, mm-hmm. you will send it to me on your letterhead from your headquarters. And he answered, or somebody answered, yes, I will. And then nothing ever happened. So if 
if he was who he said he was, mm-hmm. I'm sure the ceiling fell down on him. Mm-hmm. All of his uh, cohorts in the world would have come down and said, are you crazy? Don't talk to Keeley. You mm-hmm. never get the last word with him. Decided not to go mm. ahead. To those Masons, so have you ever had like Masons who were like, wow, I never knew it was like that, Keeley? And... Yeah, I've I've had a lot of meetings where Masons have attended. Masons and their wives have attended. And Mason would argue with me and the wife would say, no, no, no. That's exactly what you do. So, I mean, Masons are not important except as a vehicle by which the system gets access to women. Yeah, and they're just drones. Yeah. It's, it's like um, with, when they built the cathedrals, they had these Masons. And all they did was just follow orders of how to build the buildings. and then That's all they do. <laughs> they're just slaves. Yeah. They drive the getaway car. Yeah. They're yeah. not important in their own right. The important is the woman. Yeah. And most of their wives, I would suggest, if not all of them, mm-hmm. are we men, not women. Yeah, and I seen too, uh like when I was reading Psychopedia, like one uh one of the definitions they 